This weekend I'm exploring the world of high stakes gambling. In this video, you're gonna hear the stories of guys who place million dollar bets like it's nothing. 25k pop right here, there's 100 racks, two, three, four, five, 550,000 dollars right here, bro. Welcome to Vegas. We're gonna find out if their online personas are legit and what draws people to a lifestyle of risk. My name is Will Freark. As a creator, I'm still on the come up, so I'm always chasing new opportunities. Sometimes that means just packing up my bags and traveling the country on a moment's notice. So I know a little bit about risk myself. So yeah, the lifestyle of these Vegas gamblers is honestly fucking crazy. But in order to tell this story, it's important to show you how I ended up in Vegas in the first place. So I'm gonna take you back to the beginning of this weekend when I was visiting my old school, Penn State, to chase one of those opportunities I was talking about earlier. We're going to Penn State right now. We're leaving Brooklyn. Offset's performing at Penn State. I actually hit him up a couple days ago and he said he'd be down to do some TikTok content. Uh, we're surprising Wyatt as well. My brother's a senior there. We're gonna see what the vibes are when we're a little closer. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, so he has an appearance in Miami right after his set. Just finding out about this after like 15 minutes of being on the road. <laughs> oh. Shit, dude. All right, guys, so today we're going to Penn State and we're going to be surprising my brother. <laughs> it's so weird how this shit works, but I guess that's kind of an L. <laughs> so that's a classic example of something in my industry just not fucking working out. It happens all the time. It's not really a big deal. But we just decided, fuck it, we're at Penn State for the night. Let's do what Penn State kids do. When I woke up the next morning, I received a phone call that would change the trajectory of all of our weekends. How you feel? How's last night? I feel good, dude. I think we're just gonna scrap this, to be honest. Oh, God. This should be good. Yep. Jair Bear, what, what up, brother? Right Hung his shit in State College. Okay, well, I need you to go look at flights. I need you to be in Las Vegas for the next 12 hours as possible. <laughs> 12? This one's not like a laughing moment. This is like, a, I need to put you on a plane with whoever you're with as fast as possible. I need Will in Las Vegas. What's the, what's the situation? What do you need? I need you to film a video for a professional sports better. He's the best sports better in the world. He's probably going to win a bunch of games on camera. What's his name? Sean Perry. Are you dead ass right now? I'm so serious. He's already all over the internet, and I need you to do what you do best. Same thing you would do with artists. Just do it with him. Make him go viral, bro. Your will. Just do what you do. I need you now. <laughs> all right, give me an hour. I'll call you back. You have 30 minutes. I'm waiting for you. I love you. I <laughs> love you, man. Holy Bye. fuck. All right. I checked out flights. I actually am down to send it, but if I'm going to go to Vegas, I want all the homies to come with me, so I'm going to try and convince them. Well, what's the deal with the whole Vegas thing? Bro? What are the logistics? We're going to, go there, to basically film back. a crazy gambling video with this guy. This is Stout. He's my little brother's roommate, and he's honestly one of the wildest motherfuckers I know. While he's far from average, he worries about all the same stuff a normal kid would. Homework, what his parents are going to say. We wonder if they're like, you're not fucking gambling. But I was determined to get Stout to take this risk with me, fly to Vegas, and experience the life of millionaire gamblers. Is this real? Yeah. <laughs> Just tell me yes or no, because I want to put you on the flights. Five minutes. Can I have five minutes? Sure. Dude, Vegas is heinous. Are you gonna come to Vegas? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you thinking of going? <laughs> I would totally rip it if that's the plan. Why do you think that you can't go? Because my parents, like, dude, they would be, they would be like pissed if I just went to. Don't tell them. Okay, wait, I don't want to be on video saying <laughs> Asking for forgiveness is way better than permission. Connor, Why what's your email? What's, what's his email? What's his email? Uh, Connor Stout. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, fuck it. I'm, I'm calling my mom right now. And we'll all be together as yeah. group. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, let's go! 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 It's crazy because the purpose of this trip changed from let's film with Offset to let's poach Wyatt, Lakshmi, and Connor and have them fucking come to Vegas with us. So an identical scene. No turning back now, no turning back. <laughs> when we got to the airport, we pulled all our money and vowed to throw it all on the road. This is actually absurd. 16 hours ago, I was still drunk and you guys convinced me to go. We put it on red, so confident in it. How's it feel? 
like a fever dream. <laughs> We're going straight to Circa. The NFL game starts in under an hour now. They're gonna cop us a room at Circa for the day because the girls need to do girl things, shower, <laughs> change their clothes, shit that we just don't do, you know? So we met Sean Perry, one of the biggest gamblers in the world. Nice to meet you. And he wasted no time placing a six-figure bet. Can I bet 100000 on it? We're going to watch football, drink beer, and win money. And then we're going to leave tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I won. Right here, picking up cash from the sports book. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. What do you talk about, dude? Stop playing with bro. Hey, can I hold this? Yeah, 100%, bro. 100%. Yo. Hey, wait, wait, that's nothing though. We got way more where that came from. <laughs> we're taking this 100K and we're about to turn it into 200K is what's about to happen. Are you nervous when you throw that type of money? Absolutely or not, what you bro, do? this is just what I do. If I could bet a million, I'd bet a million, you know what I'm saying? It's my first sports bet in Vegas ever. Let's do it, bro. Yeah. Yo, Offset's calling me. Oh shit. Yo, what's up, bro? A lot of people, friends, like Offset right now, right? You said you were filming him. Yeah. He's up like 700,000 in five days. Off your picks? Off my picks. He's already cut from his bookie. He has to find a new bookie. Look at the homie right here. We've been printing money or what, bro? Printing money out here with Offset. <laughs> so what we did is we bet lines minus six means they have to win by six points or more for us to win our money. All of my fans are firing it. We got 7,000 people right now on it. We need a touchdown. I'm a math nerd, basically. So we build algorithms and stuff. For instance, like baseball, we factor in the positioning of the sun. So if, if it's over the plate or not, there's sunlight in his eyes, they're not going to hit as well. So then we're firing unders, what time planes land, like travel tendency. Just everything you can factor in for sports. So we take all these things and the details. In sports, it's all about the numbers. You can never look at a game and be like, oh, this team's going to win. It's all just like a math equation. If you're still unclear on how sports betting works, here's the dirty goth boy explaining it in simpler terms. You know what it's like, honestly? It's like when you buy, you like sneakers at all? You know there's a big resale market? Yeah. It's like this. Every time that you see a pair of shoes going that you know those were $2,000, but you can buy it for $1,900. You just buy it, whether you like the shoes or not. What the title of the shoe is irrelevant. You're like, that's a deal. I'm gonna buy it because when I resell it, it's worth more. Yeah. You just try to beat the lines, and then you have to, at the end, you just gotta watch the game. If I bet minus six, the line's gonna close like minus seven. If I bet like plus five, the line's gonna close plus four, things like that. Because when you bet- Because my bet's sharp, I move the whole market and stuff, yeah. <laughs> we're about to go to the next hotel. Uh, Sean went two for two, and the Bills game just started, so we're gonna get there in time for that, but dude, this is nuts. This is one of my favorite shoots we've done, honestly. Nah, this is crazy. Bro. I spend millions a year on like the smartest people in the world in this world, who I met through the poker world. They all work for me. I, I pay a lot to these guys, and they build me the best algorithms possible. So I have the best guy in each sport originating my plays, and then I go embed it everywhere. What do you think about Las Vegas? Oh, I absolutely, I love it. I was born and raised here, and I'm kind of honestly living my dream, bro. My father is a professional poker player. I idolized him. My bar mitzvah was a poker themed. My 10 year old birthday present, I got a thousand bucks right from my dad, and I was gambling. Like, this is what I've done since I was a kid. So far, Vegas was living up to the hype, and I think Stout is definitely glad he came. <laughs> when I'm in Vegas, I do Vegas things! Do Vegas. Stout! <laughs> Woohoo! Let's go, Bills! Yeah! The best I've ever bet on a parlay was five dollars. I just put a hundred down because we pushed the shit out of him and it worked. <laughs> like literally, peer pressure is a real thing, guys. Don't we'll give into it always. Let's go, Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. <laughs> Let's go, Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. As soon as I put the stripe polo on, it's game over. <laughs> oh wait, I didn't put on the other. Fuck. <laughs> when you look this good, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, the overs. I know the overs. The Bills have yeah. the ball. The Bills have the ball. Holy shit, bro! Sean must be going crazy down there. Yeah. So just a reminder, we need the Bills to beat the Chiefs by at least three points in order to win this bet. While we were really nervous with a couple hundred bucks on the line, Sean explained that this is just another one of his bets. Bro, I bet every single day. Really? Every sport, every day, this is what I do. There's no sleeping, no what days about, off. What about like obscure sports? Bro, I, like I said, I, there's times when I gamble against some of my friends. So you start the day betting baseball, it leads into basketball. That nighttime you can have like football games or whatever it be. Yeah. And then there's tennis that comes on at like midnight like overseas and then at 3 a.m. we were finding hundreds of thousands of me against my friend in women's Chinese table tennis bro <laughs> like there's all from wake up to sleep non-stop game on anything elections sports table tennis oh my god 
right when we thought the Bills had lost our bet, they miraculously got into field goal range. Big ball. Tremendous support in the building. If he has to make one for us, the game on the line, he will. 44 yards, Bass. No, he doesn't make it. Oh, oh my God, bro, he missed that. No way, bro. And with that, we quickly learned about the downsides of gambling. I mean, yeah, this just happens, right? Well, 100%, bro. You can't win every bet. This is out of gambling. This is why we preach discipline. Don't put all your money on one thing. I mean, four and one on any day is incredible. I lose one, win three. I'm up to 100 racks in the day. It's crazy because it's all calibrated. We put 100 each on this parlay, and we're going to lose it. So, like, we're like, fuck, but you're chilling because you're still up. He bought 10 pairs of shoes, nine of them sold for more than he got the sale price for. The one pair he instructed you to buy, the resale value happened to be less than you paid for. But that's the concept. It's like you're constantly buying resellable shoes at a sale. And you're hoping that when, after you buy them, the sale value goes up and you resell them for more. That's like what sports betting is. This is Mickey Mace, the most notorious gambler in the world. He's run up over $30 million playing Baccarat, which has gotten him banned from nearly every casino in Las Vegas. You may have seen his interviews on No Jumper, Soft White Underbelly, or pretty much anywhere on TikTok. And he also has happens to be friends with Sean Perry. Listen, there's two buildings in the city I'm allowed in, and this is one of them, but he's banned from this book, so it's the only way that we can like get together in a casino is to do this. He has to place your bets yeah. at here, and you have to place his bets elsewhere? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I know it's real. The thing is, when you use words like lock of the day, it's the ultimate scammer words, and I, well, I'm trying so hard to get you to stop saying that. I told him that I put him in a VIP suite yeah. last night, and he was all like, really? Like, I don't be in a hotel. I'm like, what do you mean, bro? Bro, but I live in a sick-ass apartment, though, right? Yeah, bro, but you gave me all this attitude when I told you I got you a VIP hotel. I love you, Mickey. I love you. We all love you showed Mickey. Travis the room. Do you know I know how I met this guy years yeah. ago? I got invited to a mansion's party. They're like yeah, only meant for the, the top gamblers. Yeah. You can't even buy them. Like you, you can, only way you can get them is if you're a super high roller in the casino. It's invite right? only. Yeah, you couldn't even pay for one. So we go. You first of all have to have a butler walk you to this elevator, and you get in a private elevator, and the elevator comes up into the unit. <coughs> the second the unit, the elevator opens. Mickey is laying on a fucking table <laughs> right this, getting his. And he's like, yo, welcome to my crib. <laughs> I've never seen a party like that in my life. It lasted seven days. That party went on for seven oh, days, yeah. 24 hours a day. We had a thousand people in attendance at all times. But you don't drink though. I definitely don't drink. You but guys like, are like, I, don't drink, I, I don't drink, smoke, I don't say curse words, I don't eat sugar, I don't drink caffeine, I don't go strip clubs. But he gets, nothing. he has the girls, that's for sure. Getting your son <laughs> sober on a table is crazy. <laughs> when the elevator door opens and yeah. someone's there, naked girls, mm -hmm. dick getting sucked, all this, either you immediately say, I don't know what's happening, but I don't want to know. Yeah. yeah. Or you go, I'm in the right spot. So we immediately know we're with it or not. You know, yeah, like yeah. it sets the tone. It's a good situation. You ever seen the thing when Bryce Hall and Addison Rae were dating and he allegedly cheated on her with a different porn star? It was star? that night. It was that night. Oh it's going to be really hard to explain to someone who doesn't even have a base level understanding of what the private games look like, what mine look like. Why? Literally. We used to do the last weekend of every month. We'd start on Thursday and we wouldn't end till Monday. No sleeping. Hundreds of girls never wearing more than lingerie, all working the game. Michelin star chefs. And it was just like the ultimate party from that Thursday until Monday without breaking. We're on the way to the Baccarat table and he's gonna throw some crazy fucking money down, bro. Right, the These guys are nuts. Dude. We have to put away the big cameras here. Oh god. Okay. So is there a trick in this? Do it? Yeah, yeah. The thing is that I have a card up my sleeve, so it's not the oh. way I want my sleeve. <laughs> Almost. Okay. Alright, let's get this. Come on, baby! I'm gonna ride 25k with you, right, bro? You're fucking sad. Oh, 100 percent Come on! How do I have that 10,000 on the line? Talking about this shit. Let's go! 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 I'm in full belief that there's no such thing as actually winning in Bakr at long term. And, and I'll, tell you, me, I'll tell you, it's not a winning game. But Mickey has been the only anomaly in the gambling world in Bakr. He's like he said, up over 37 million. So we came here, we showed up with what, 475,000. And we got combined here like four, five, 
We won $150,000 just right now playing with Mickey Bacarat. Welcome to Vegas, another day in the life. 10 minutes, bro, $150,000. I fucking love you, bro. Hey, I say we go back. <laughs> I love you, bro. I'm, I'm not gonna, I say we go back. We'll make another 150. <laughs> they try to hold us up as long as they can to keep us sitting at the table, knowing we're degenerates and we'll gamble if we sit there long enough. We didn't fall for it, obviously, but a lot of people do. We did fall for it, though. Not we. You. <laughs> Bro, to be honest, I had no idea what the fuck was going on the whole game. She was trying to explain to me Baccarat. So overall, how was how was the Vegas trip, bro? You guys came out here, fire mass on sports. Bro, yesterday we, we had been up for 24 hours straight. Like by the time we were <laughs> ass, like from New York. So there have been ups and downs, but the night is not over yet. Even though we lost, Sean is still up 250K, so it's time to celebrate. Call the Ubers before we shotgun. I can call. I can call. Jerry's gonna fucking kill us, bro. We're late. Quick, we gotta go. We gotta go. Ah, not in the Uber's here. Let's go. Yo, to the right, yo. This is my first time in Vegas, and it was a peer pressure, so I'm living it the fuck up. Okay. You gotta do more of that. Yeah. Do more of that, because you only get one life. This is me and my roommate's first time here. Mm -hmm. We're about to get a tattoo tonight. Where? We don't know where, but if you get it with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get loyalty in Chinese on my back. Loyalty in Chinese? We have to be friends forever, though. Like, no matter what happens, if you fuck my wife 20 years from now, why is that the point? I don't know. It's just, what else would we be unloyal about? First time to Vegas. Yeah, I'm getting lit. About to get too bad, bitch. Yeah, I suck the tip. Uh huh. I ball just like I'm hardin'. These niggas, they be seeing me. These pussy niggas don't stop it. I'm coming out of Brooklyn. These niggas know I'm topic, and I'm fucking on these hoes like a yawn, nigga. Pop it, yeah, nigga. <laughs> Every Vegas trip always ends in like the most demoralized visitors. Of all time. It's yeah. definitely the most down bad people are the ones departing from the Vegas airport. You're right. You're just looking back like... <laughs> You're just such a fucking fuck piece of shit. Is this even my channel anymore? It's just like the stout show. <laughs> I was crying at dinner for an hour. <laughs> I know. Was that pathetic? It was so I pathetic. Was so no bet is guaranteed to win. As a gambler, all you can do is study trends, learn from mistakes, and manage your bankroll to make sure you never run out of steam. But I think this could be applied to how we live our lives. My initial attempt to film Offset was a swing and a miss, and honestly there was no guarantee that Vegas would be any different. But the way I gave myself an edge was by enjoying the process. Stout won his gamble, and so did I, by making sure I was surrounded by the people I care about most on this journey. Stout sent us a thank you card for taking him to Vegas. So, you want to open it? He just has thank you cards on hand. Alex and Will, thank you for letting me crash in Brooklyn for a few nights. As far as Vegas goes, all I can say is holy fucking shit. Will, thank you for allowing us to tag along from watching the games at Circa to boozing at Poppy Steak. I loved it all. I'm very blessed to have met such welcoming people like you guys. Love Connor. <laughs> That's actually really sweet. I miss him. I wonder what he's doing right now. Can I do the thing where it's like, you can talk about the I go like that and the camera goes like, all right, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Subscribe. Yo, I was going to set Will Free on my ass. If you take me to the top, I'll be set Will Free on my ass. What do you mean take me to the top? I'm going to travel everywhere with you. I'll get it on my ass. I'll Fire snow.